Hello again, everybody. Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. Today, we head to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Nike hot seat, very special guest. Pat Smith joins us. Pat, how are you? Doing great. Thanks, Scott. I'm ready to talk Greco, dude. It's been several years. You've been constantly flirting with the spot on the Greco national team. Well, you really broke through on the weekend in Vegas on April 30th when you won the 71 kilo title, earning you a spot on that team for the 2017 World Championships. It'll be in August. It'll be in Paris. How excited are you? Oh, I'm really excited. Um, like I've said a couple times, it's it was a pretty vindicating experience. You know, I've been towing the line, like you said, for a long time, and uh, it just it feels good to finally break through and get my opportunity to represent the U.S. in the in the World Championships. It's been a goal of mine since I was a little kid, and um, uh, I'm really excited for the opportunity to to compete on that stage. You know, you, you're you're part of that famed Minnesota Storm. Uh, uh, what I call the wrecking crew. Okay. Uh, it seems, it seems to me that, you know, the that. Minute, pardon. I said, I like that. We should trademark that. It was trademark it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Pat, this is, this is your time to shine and, and you're really standing up and representing the team guys like Joe Rao and others. Uh, uh, there are so, so much in your corner. Can you talk about the, the team aspect of, of the storm being there for you? Yeah, we've got just an amazing group of guys here training, and, and we've all been together for a while. Um, even the guys that aren't from Minnesota, they, they've they kind of come in and, and turned into Minnesota guys. We're giving Joe a lot of a lot of crap lately. It's like he's uh, he's one of us now. Uh, he's a Minnesota guy. I know the Illinois guys probably won't like that too much, but he is. And uh, we just we have a great training environment, and I think that that's, that's the, 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 the biggest thing that we have going for us, honestly. Um, and that's that's the reason I want to be in Minnesota. I, I love the training environment. I love the people that I train with: Alec Ortiz, uh, Brad Dozel, Joe Rao, Hayden Zilmer, Barrett Stanghill, Justin Laval. Um, they're all great guys, and we're all pushing each other to get better every day. And then uh, I think we got a couple of the best coaches in the country with, with Brandon Paulson and Dan Chandler, um, who have you know I've been working with since I was a little kid. So it's it's uh, it's pretty awesome to be able to come through and and uh, share this experience with everybody coming up. And uh, so, yeah. Dan Chandler's kind of like that silent hero for everybody, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's the man, the myth, the legend. You know? Quietly confident. Very, very. He's, he's, he's very cool. Very cool. I don't know if there's another way you could describe him. No, I think that's it. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've been trying to figure him out for 20 plus years. And I can't, you're not going to. You're not going <laughs> to. It's, it's magic. Um, yeah. let me, let's talk about how you, you started um, in, in the sport. Uh, obviously, Harry and Sue were going, you're going to do what now? You're going to wrestle? And you said, yeah. And Zach and Sarah said, we'll be there for you. And Chaska mm -hmm. itself turned out, the, you know, high school and and uh, the, the community, but you really are a product of the Minnesota Storm Foundational Program, you said. And is that still true to the, today, or is it even more so? Yeah, I mean, I'd say it's even more so. It's it's all compounding on, on my roots, I guess. Uh, you want to talk about starting in wrestling. You know, my, my dad wasn't a wrestler. Um, my family, there wasn't really any wrestlers. We didn't have that whole like, connection. My brother wrestled, and he's 11 years older than me. Uh, growing up, I just wanted to be pretty much exactly like him. So when I was five, I got a pair of shoes and a singlet for my birthday, and I was so jacked up uh, that my mom <laughs> snuck me into the little kids program. I was supposed to be in first grade to start, but they uh, they they slid it aside. Mike Schultz uh, did us a favor and let me come in a little bit early and um, started from there with the Chaska Stallions program um, and then just continued to come up through. Uh, was very fortunate to have... Uh, People like Mike Houck, 1985 world champ and former national team coach, just happened to be teaching in the area um, and came in and worked with our little kids program. Um, you know, and then when I was in ninth grade, the head coach of uh, Whitewater now um, started coaching in Chaska as well, straight out of um, his career at Iowa. Um, so and then they also he joined forces with Mike while we were there. So I, I got a lot of great coaching coming up just in the Chaska area and then um, Min USA Wrestling also has just a lot of really great opportunities for uh, kids in the development stages to to get better you know when you're a cadet and junior Monday Wednesday practices we're working with Gordy Morgan and Dan Chandler every week um, and that became a, a regular thing and I think that's where the whole product of the Minnesota Storm thing comes from for me because you know I've been going to dance practices since I was 
14 um, and just trying to soak everything I can up and doing the Fargo and, and the Cadet and Junior Duels and uh, just trying to be around all this great wrestling that's come out of Minnesota. Um, and I think that that's a, that's a really big thing, too, with all the, the history, the Olympians, the Olympic medals um, that have come out of um, just our small little area uh, is impressive. And it's, it's motivating for a younger kid to see that uh, because it, it shows you an avenue where you can do it. And I'm, I'm really excited to uh, break through and be a part of that um, and, you know, hopefully leave my mark on, on that stamp as well so it's interesting to see how you progressed into greco because realistically you started out in freestyle and folk style and um because wasn't it freestyle first yeah yeah so we didn't have uh we didn't have a folk style club in chaska when i was a little kid i didn't start wrestling folk style until we actually moved we moved to little falls for a couple of years it's a town in central minnesota and then moved back um but uh yeah so we didn't we didn't have a little kids folk style club we just wrestled freestyle so yeah, and I, I think the first Greco tournament I did, my my brother came home because he took me to all my tournaments and stuff most of the time, and coached me all the way up through when I was younger. Younger, and uh, he came home one day. Hey, you want to wrestle Greco? I was like, What's Greco? He's like, Yeah, <laughs> come on, we're, we'll find out. <laughs> uh, that may have been in fourth grade, but you know, I didn't really start getting into Greco um, until uh, later in high school, and I started working with uh, with Mike Halk. Um, and uh developing that relationship with him and and um and then after working with him i started to see a little bit more success started to understand the sport a bit, little bit um and the you know the purity uh the one-on-one combat of it and uh just kind of uh grew from there i guess true, um, a true minnesota kid uh and and i don't know how you ended up at minnesota can you tell us how you transitioned from high school and ended up at the university of minnesota yeah, um, it's kind of an interesting story. Um, so I graduated in 2009, the year before they had recruited Mario Mason and Jake Deitzler at my weight. Um, and I was a Minnesota kid, uh, grew up watching the Gophers. They won their back-to-back national titles 2001, 2002, um, when I was, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth, fourth, fifth grade. And, uh, I mean, those guys were my idols. I went to J-Rob camps growing up, um, you know, it was, they were the big deal in Minnesota and, you know, everybody wanted to be a grofer growing up. Jay did a really good job of creating that environment in the community. And, um, we all looked up to those guys, you know, Luke Becker, Brandon Ingham, those guys were my, my heroes growing up, Jared Lawrence, watching those guys wrestle. But, uh, they had recruited some, some really tough guys on my weight and, uh, wasn't totally sure if, uh, they were going to be looking at me. So I had actually written a letter to pretty much every Division One school because I wasn't very highly recruited. I hadn't, uh, I hadn't won a state title. Um, I had just placed at like junior nationals the year before. Was just starting to come into my own. I was pretty much pretty late bloomer, um, and uh, so I wasn't getting highly recruited. So I, I was writing letters to schools and trying to get some feedback. And actually, Minnesota was the only school I think I didn't write a letter to her, and. Uh, Joe Russell called me up uh, the fall of my senior year and uh, started recruiting me and um, actually came out to some of my captain's practices. Um, and then Jay called me up and I did a couple of visits and um, kind of came down to what I really wanted to do. I was actually looking at the Air Force Academy really, really hard. Um, and it was it was a decision between you know what I wanted to do and I and I wanted to at that point in time I wanted to be a really good wrestler and uh, I knew Minnesota could do that for me, mm. um, so uh, I wasn't totally sold on the military thing uh, at that point either. So um, so I decided to come to Minnesota and you know um, made a, a ton of awesome friends. Like I said, uh, you know a lot of the the whole thing with. Um, being a product of Minnesota and, and all of that is, uh, the opportunity to be able to, to be around and, uh, rub elbows with some of like the best people, uh, you'll ever come in contact with. And that just continued when I came to Minnesota, not let alone like my training partners and everybody was around like Tony Nelson, Kevin Steinhouse, uh, Jake Deitzler, all those guys were in my class coming in and, you know, David Thorne, I mean, the list can go on and on, and then you know the the mentors around, like Jay Jay Robinson, obviously has a huge 
impact on the life, my life and the way I think and Brandon Egum, Luke Becker. Um, but legitimately we can, we can so, point, we can point the first finger at Joe yeah. Russell, who just accepted yeah, a new Russell. position, Joe and, and yeah. Sadie and, and Taft will be heading out to Colorado Springs. Um, and, and I think this is where he was destined to be anyway. You think about how he helped you. He's helped mm-hmm. hundreds of other kids just like you, you know? Yeah. What yeah. You- Joe's one of the, the best people I've ever met. I'm really excited. Period. Yeah. So just- I, I, I can't speak enough about how amazing a person Joe Russell is. Uh, and he's going to do awesome things wherever he goes. And so I'm excited that he'll be out in Colorado and I can see and him time go out there. So in doing my research on you, I was talking with Joe and Sadie and they, they informed me that, uh, Perhaps it's it may not be on your bio, but uh, they tell tell me that they shared with me that you love playing jazz flute. Is there yes. any truth to that? Huge jazz, yeah. huge jazz flute. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's more for Joe Rao than I, anybody. I'm, I'm a little rusty though. I'm a little rusty. <laughs> but no, you're actually a, a, you like to play guitar. Flute. You like to play guitar, not jazz flute, right? Yeah, I do. I do. I do like to play guitar. I was just. Um, it's just kind of like a stress reliever kind of thing for me. That's cool though. It shows, oh, yeah. You know, but playing guitar is not easy. It's hard on the fingers, first of all. Uh, yeah. But it's yeah. Uh, build up the calluses. <laughs> you build it. I had three lessons, and my uh, and Ray Fabus, my guitar instructor, said if you thought about trombone. <laughs> 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 and you know what? My mother said, no, we haven't. So let's try that. So let's talk a bit about uh, Las Vegas. Obviously, you made it yours this year. Um, for the second straight year, you reached the best of three uh, to decide the spot on the national team for the Worlds. And unlike in freestyle, well, this year's U.S. Open was a qualifier for World Team Trials. This year's Open doubled as the finals for the for the Greco, the trials, as it were. And so you were able to really do, I, I think it was one of those events that, you know, you just broke through. Can you talk about that feeling you had? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, it was a quick tournament because it was trials. We had our nationals back in December, actually, to, to determine what was going on. And so right after the first match, I had Rayvon, who who uh, beat me to make the Olympic team last year. And that was, that was pretty tough. Um, but I always knew that if I wrestled my match, I could... I was better and could beat him and um, pretty much just let it go, focused on some positional things and, and just went out there and decided to see what was going to happen. I ended up turning out well. Um, and I was really excited about that match uh, for whatever reason afterwards. It wasn't, it wasn't before, but it was, you know, after I, uh, that's when uh, I got pretty pumped up and um, just kept it rolling all the way through. I felt good, felt confident, very confident. Um, mentally all the way through and and uh after winning that second match it was it was just it was just a really good feeling um that match with you and schubert um the score of the final by the way 12-7 but it was like two warring armies just lobbing shells at each other and, and <laughs> that's what it felt like to me just even watching it in post again uh it was tremendous to watch and then you went on to win your next bout 6-0 which was kind of a statement i think um and then that last match with Christopher Gonzalez, uh, 6-0. That sealed your spot. And yeah. uh, at, at 25, you're 25 now or is it 26? 26, mm-hmm. yeah. We'll yeah, we'll turn give 26 you the, in December. So you start out in Greco, at, at least in my estimation, at 66 kilos, which equals out to be 145 and a half. Are you comfortable at 71? Yeah, that's a lot better weight for me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm kind of a tweener as far as the Olympic weights go, and it'll be interesting to see what they do when they change them again. Um, so, you know, last year was, it was a tough decision because it was, you know, either go up or down. <laughs> uh, so I decided to go down. Um, thought that was the best plot, spot for me, and that was a, that was a pretty big, pretty big lifestyle change. Um, so 71 is just a really good weight for me. Can you talk to me about Zach Sanders? What's it like training around Zach Sanders? It's great, honestly. Uh, you know, I live like five feet down the hall from Zach, uh, <laughs> and um, he's just a great influence because he's he's somebody that does everything right, um, and he's very meticulous and um, very knowledgeable about about his training. So it's we have very a lot of uh, great. Um, conversations all the time about you know training and what we're doing constantly bouncing ideas off each other 
like I said, we're kind of a wrestling incubator over here with me, myself, Joe Rao, Dustin Slater. Um, so we've got we got all sorts of different uh, perspectives that we can kind of throw at each other, which is kind of the cool thing about our house right now. So I think it's an outstanding house. You want to know the truth, Pat? Um, a lot of Pat Smiths out there, but there's uh, there's only one Greco star named Pat Smith. There was a freestyle cat once upon a time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, come out of the Smith family out of uh, Oklahoma, and uh, there's maybe different vocal patterns than you. But uh, <laughs> let me ask you this: what What do you guys do as far as training, uh, diet, film? What do you do to prepare for Paris? Um, so right now, Momir and uh, Matt are putting together a pretty pretty strong uh, training program for us, and pretty confident in what we got going on, but. So we just actually came back from a camp. Uh, we went out to Matt's hometown, uh, Eagle Creek, Oregon, um, and we basically just trained in the woods for two weeks, kind of Rocky style. Uh, he's got uh, a friend who owns a car dealership in Gresham, Weston, Kia, um, and he kind of put us up for the week along with uh, a couple other people. And you know, we worked out three times a day, running, lifting, and uh, circuit training. Um, and then uh, on the side, we, we got to do some fun stuff, too, which was really cool. But uh, um, so we were out there uh, for the last two weeks, just got back. Now we're kind of uh, just getting ready for Tbilisi Grand Prix in Georgia, which will be on June 11th. I leave on the 6th for that. Um, and that'll be a good tournament, uh, kind of a good time to get some matches in before Worlds, uh, see that international competition. And then once we get back from that, or uh, once that's over, we're going to go straight to Budapest and train with the Hungarian national team for two weeks. And then uh, we'll be back uh, the month of July um, training in Colorado. Um, and that'll be our main world team camp. And then we're buttoned right up. And August 11th, we head out and acclimate and get ready to go. So, Pat, I'm going to ask you about something uh, Timmy Hand said about you and writing about you. He said, this is one dude who doesn't just prefer hard contact, but almost seems to need it in order to get going. I've seen it, <laughs> I, I've, I've seen it before in other high-level athletes, guys like Kale Sanderson. Uh, uh, the, the list goes on. Uh, Jake Varner is a perfect example. Uh, ben Askren was another example. He'll, you know, he'll, it's like you get your attention and you're down by one or two. It's like you get the attention, then all of a sudden you start firing on cylinders. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm more about the, uh, the battle when it comes to wrestling. So as far as, uh, contact goes, you kind of hit it on the head. I need a good contact warm up. I need a, once we start banging and going hard, that's, uh, that's when the fun starts. That's when, you know, guys starts coming back, back at you. That's when I like to see. So, that's I don't know. That's my favorite part of wrestling is is uh, the fight. I guess you could say. So that's pre it's a pretty good uh, pretty good observation by by Timmy Hand of five point move. Yeah, he seems to, he's, he's he's got a way with words. I'd he say. does. He's, he's other people, <laughs> yeah. Other people not have way. Um, all right, so Pat, let's let's give some thanks for uh, where credit is due because quite frankly, none of us wrestled to this point and this level that you're at all by yourself. So who do you want to thank? Huh, like uh, a lot of the people have mentioned all the way through, you know, Min USA Wrestling, um, everybody back in Chaska, uh, and my family, um, and my brother, my parents, my sister, my niece and nephews, um, obviously the Storm uh, wrestling team, without them it's not possible, Jordan Holm for everything that he's done to grow it, all my training partners. Um, USA wrestling for all the opportunities that I've gotten over the few years, uh, last few years, um, Minnesota go for wrestling, uh, and that family and everybody there. And, um, I'm sure there's a ton more body rejuvenation. Uh, it's the, uh, the strength and PT program that I've been doing out of, uh, Shoreview, Minnesota, uh, pinnacle wrestling. Um, Yeah. Everything. Is that, that is that how you're paying? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm missing some people. You know who you are. Uh, so hopefully. I, oh, um, there's also uh, Maximize Living. Jared Oshendorf. Or nice. Oshendorf. Um, great chiropractor in the Minnesota area. Um, Shelly Larson, who helps me out with some massage stuff. She's out of Lakeville. Uh, man, 
should have told me we were going to do this, I would have wrote down a list, Scott. But that's not fair, <laughs> though. I mean, that's, there's, that's, there's, more, there's, all, there's so many people <laughs> that are that are part of the team, and it's just it's it's pretty awesome uh, the, to be able to um, to get to this level because they've been they've been right there with me with all the support, just as uh, as much as I've been pushing, you know. So there, uh, it's a it's it's been definitely a giant team effort. There's always a million other people that are involved. Uh, in something something like this so uh very grateful for everybody and that's that's been around now knowing me i'm from minneapolis originally myself and i would find myself cruising around lake calhoun lake of the woods lake harriet etc mm-hmm. were you on the water at all over the weekend yeah we I, me and zach just actually me zach and joe went uh went out to calhoun yesterday um hung out played some frisbee you know, walk the lakes and stuff, good active rest. So I like it was that. gorgeous yesterday. You got to get out to Calhoun and, and, uh, and just enjoy the, the, the sun. I wouldn't tell anybody right now, possibly to go live where I live. That's kind of a dangerous area now, but it wasn't too short a walk to Calhoun. And i tell you what, it was uh, some of the greatest weekends of my life. And this is one of the best interviews of the day for sure. And we got to talk Greco with Pat Smith. He is uh, heading to Paris, France in August. We'll be looking forward to seeing the results as we cover that event on Takedown and Global Wrestling News. A Nike hot seat special guest. It wasn't painful for you, was it, Pat? No, it wasn't too bad. Thanks, guys. I mean, you're a gamer, <laughs> right? You, you, you handle it all. Uh, yeah. Appreciate you taking the time to join us, man. I know that uh, we still have the balance of what is Memorial Day as we do this interview today. But uh, we look forward to talking to you again very soon. We appreciate you taking the time of the day. Best to your family. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. For all of us at Takedown and Global, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching the special one-on-one with Pat Smith.